वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू टुडे आई वेलकम यू बैक ऑल हेयर फॉर द फॉर मच मोर प्रजेंटेशन विच वी हैव इन स्टोर फॉर यू लेट स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट ग्रुप फॉर टुडे ब्लेंडर एनिमेशन मैनेज बाय मिस्टर शमी समीर शास्त्रबुद्धी एंड मेंटेड बाय मिस पूजा भावासर एंड मिस्टर नितिन अयर नेत्रा थ्री डी नेत्रा थ्री डी इज एन ई लर्निंग एप्लीकेशन डिजाइन टू एक्वेंट अ स्टूडेंट विद द एनाटॉमी ऑफ ह्यूमन आई विद इट्स वेरीड फीचर्स components and functionality in a 3d view space it offers both exploration and practice for the user to review and evaluate learning at his own place easy navigable navigability replete with the android interactivity cav cav cavalcade of touch pinch zoom and swipe let us see what the presentation has good morning everyone Uh, in this session we are going to discuss about the various stages that we have gone through in creation of our final product uh, we belong to the blender animations group uh, which has been creating various applications for desktop and uh, educational apps for desktop and android platforms uh, so in this period of internship we were given the task to create an educational app for viewing the internal structure of human eye in uh, using software such as blender 3d and unity uh, the use of media is increasing day by day uh, people are more inclined to the use of tablets and smartphones uh, so uh, we wanted the, to exploit this feature for uh, using in educational uh, in uh, educational system uh, what we have presently is uh, we basically uh, next slide uh, our means of uh, education is through textbooks nowadays so uh, that textbook is uh, convenient for uh, some theoretical topics but not for topics such as i in which we have 3d model in which we need interaction and viewing the uh, uh, model of i completely because i is uh, a topic which has uh, which can be viewed uh, best when we have uh, the cross section and uh, view at various angles so uh, in in textbooks uh, we have 2d images which do not have any kind of interaction they uh, are just they do not uh, are not in motion and they just show the cross sections through various angles so uh, in our app we have added the interactivities like uh, whatever interactivities are there in android applications and tablets that we have tried to explore exploit in our app uh, we have uh, added swipe interaction uh, touch and pin zoom interaction and accelerometer rotation uh, so uh, uh, our uh, app basically consists of three stages in which we have uh, explained the internal structure of eye and the working of eye through animation and the various uh, practice activities involved with uh, those explanations so uh, starting with the uh, basic modeling of eye uh, my teammate rakshita will continue with the uh, stages that are involved in creation of uh, that eye model in blender Uh, hello everyone uh, initially uh, in during the first two weeks of our internship we were being trained in the blender software so what is blender blender is basically a 3d open source computer graphics software where we can model our 3d objects create animations for them and build the interactive applications for the desktop purpose we were completely new to the software so by learning all the features that were present in the blender we could model things like cup pan chess pawn etc not only we learned the blender but also we got the chance to teach the blender one of the labs in the crescent uh, they approached our mentors and they asked them to conduct the workshop for their interns and we got the opportunity to teach them the blender so that was the one of the interesting learning session that we got during this internship now our project required the 3d model of the human eye so this was created by the blender experts the the sli slide shows the uh, eye model without the materials and textures in the next slide this shows the uh, eye model which where in the blender we added materials and textures to give it a realistic view of a uh, 3d human eye next one Blender comes with its own game engine, Blender Game Engine, which is used to create 2D as well as 3D applications, but that also for the desktop purposes. It does not give .dot apk as its output, so we cannot use that game engine for the Android devices. 
if we want our blend files to be run on the android devices we need the blender player but the interactivities that we get to see in other android apps like swipe pen zoom that are not being included due to this blender player so we had to exploit other source uh, open source game engines as well as proprietary game engines to have those interactivities for the for our app so from now himalini would continue um thank you rakshita a very good morning to the august gathering present here um i will take you walk you through the other approaches we took than blender game engine now blender game engine was restrictive in the fa uh, fact that an additional blender player had to be installed for the app to run so uh, other than that we explored a cavalcade of alternatives major of these alternatives in the open source category were min 3d game kit ogre libgdx jmonkey platform catcake 3d and coco 3d among these um okay it wasn't logical to spend all the time all the course of the internship on every one of these so we divide we put up notches in our timeline and we divided ourselves into team where we had a major a simple task of in, uh, including all the interactivities of touch zoom pinch and swipe in a single blender model so if we could do that we could definitely extrapolate every of the i model functionality so among the saving um, we excluded these options from the beginning because ogre okay ogre is object oriented graphics rendering engine this was eliminated as an option for pursuing our uh, entire project because it has no sound documentation and the graphics quality uh, developed graphics quality is poor our major usp for uh, creating this app was that text is bland than visuals like we uh, like more visuals and graphics are appealing to students so poor graphics quality was something we had to eliminate at the beginning only catcake 3d is a software which is still in beta so we could not continue work in it jmonkey platform similarly is used for low level game development so again the graphics quality is poor we had to eliminate this as an option libgdx does not include textures uh, in the blend models which are imported so graphics option we had to eliminate this right away and cocos 3d is something which does publish uh, apps in android and ios but most of the work that has been done in it has only been for ios so after the saving we got to uh, punctuating our options to two which were min 3d okay min 3d is a uh, lightweight 3d framework for android so what it does it can you can take your blender model dot blend model and export it as the mesh the dot obj and dot mtl file and what min 3d will do is that it will flatten your object into an array of vertices so uh, uh, it requires add bundle with the min 3d framework installed so you can actually take the model and its vertices for manipulation and do uh, whatever changes or modifications you want in the android application code so we did not actually use min 3d as our final option too because for one model we could create the touch zoom pinch swipe interactivity but for multiple models many glitches were coming so this option could not be considered for our i model we then explored on to game kit game kit happens to be a cross platform 3d game engine using ogre kit and bullet physics for windows linux mac and iphone so what game kit does it provides us a bridge or a pipeline from dot blend to dot apk what we can do is we can impute the entire blender game engine logic which we've created and use game kit for just taking it from one place to another so what it helps us uh, the way it helps us is that we don't have to uh, go through the hassles uh, of adding more logic like whatever we've done in blender game engine can be used directly from uh, blender to game kit but game kit also was in use as a major punctuation point because okay game because it exports the entire logic we have no elbow room to add our own logic supposingly we want to change or put some more interactivity we have to go to entirely back to blender game engine and then impute all those additional features so the entire export as a complete package made us restrictive to adding any more features into it and uh, because we see because entire logic is exported 
accepted we had no access to the model for manipulation like if i want to uh, ex explore with uh, the components of the model i could not do that with game kit so game kit also we had a premature punctuation to that point now after exploring these game engines we came to a point where we uh, were introduced to the very promising unity 3d unity 3d happens to be a game development ecosystem it has a powerful rendering engine which got us right away because that is exactly what we needed for textures visuals was our major propaganda which we were saying that these are more appealing students like it more and it was available in unity 3d it has rapid workflows to create interactive 3d and 2d content uh, again it has multi platform publishing so you can create your applications in ios mac windows windows linux and obviously android we had access to the assets in the asset store now asset store is an inbuilt feature of unity okay it has sound documentation and an active forum we got through a lot of winding tassels from here to there and nowhere in all those other open source game engines because we had no documentation so if we continued from one point we actually terminated our exploration because we could not go any further unity had a very active community which could help us when we had any doubts and it had the requirements of jdk and the add bundle to be installed and the dotnet framework to be installed to work so unity was our best bet unity is a proprietary product so it is not open source but it was our best bet because all the open source uh, engine game engines that we explored they had this one thing that we needed our major requirement was neat and crisp graphics these are the things that you know attract a student a student will prefer uh, an app like this over textbooks if he sees good graphics or something which is more colorful or the components which are can can be seen in specularity and all those features so all those open source game engines they had poor presentation so unity 3d happened to be our best option because correct textures we got every object we could manipulate singly for every object and its sub components we could do scripting and scripting also we had a flexible option in three scripting languages which were javascript c sharp and boo so any three of these we were comfortable in we could add the scripts individually to models it had an extension for playing animation videos on the android platform now uh, initially when we were using blender game engines we could not uh, play the animation without having blender play installed which stopped us from working any further like uh, you had to have this additional thing installed and uh, already we had this extension in it okay the tangible ap dot apk file that we needed unity 3d was expo giving us as an export directly uh, the best point was that we got a time sensitive free license to work with unity 3d pro so our mentors and uh, professor samir sahasrabade he approached the head of operations of unity uh, in india alex mcready for a free license to actually explore unity 3d if it is actually what it promises so we got our request heard and we got a free license for 2 months so we could do we had access to unity 3d pro those features of glow effect graphics playing animations these are pro features which we got access to and another major incentive was from the work which had already been done in unity 3d many games many uh, games like temple run avant garde these have been created in unity 3d only and there had been uh, some work which had been done from our distant mentors from cmu which could uh, who could help us whenever we got stuck in unity 3d so i think uh, i should hand over the amp to ravi who will guide you through the process how we did work in unity 3d now we see the how we implemented the uh, our app in unity 3d so this is unity 3d logo so we got license uh, that we are happy um, so now this is the outline workflow for imp for implementation of for app so we basically we are creating the models in blender and export it into fbx format then the unity in unity 3d we import that uh, models which are uh, 
which are in FBX format. So, in the next, we add interactivity to that models. So that, uh, so that is the intention of our app. So, there are so many interactivity possible in Android. But for um, for explaining the and uh, structure of I, so we stick to these four um, four major inter interactivity. So touch, swipe, uh, pinch zoom, and rotate. So in order to implement these interactivity, we can Unity provides there are two ways to implement it. So we can use either C sharp or JavaScript to write the code, and we used C sharp for this app. So it's an example for t code for touch interactivity. You can see, and this is for pinch zoom interactivity. Actually, it so in mo in while explaining the um, internal internal structure of eye so we need to look whenever some uh, whenever we click on retina let's say it's a part of eye so it has to be highlighted so for uh, in order to know the user has clicked that uh, part of eye so we need touch interactivity here we can highlight the portion of eye uh, so that um, and we can also provide uh, information regarding that part so this is for pinch zoom, pinch zoom and rot accelerometer rotation are the um, prominent um, interactions that are possible in, in our app. So this is basically game plan that we took for Nether 3D application for um, that is for our app. So it contains actually three phases. So it can be better explained with the video. So I hand over to the Ruchi. Thank you Ravi. Now I'll showcase you the video featuring this application. So this is our uh, Nether 3D icon. Uh, we have uh, developed, in, developed it in Blender itself. So with the slash screen, there are three modules, which are structure of eye, uh, working of eye, and adaption of eye. In structure of eye, we have instructions which is for exploring its controls, how do we control it. So we have structure of I, detailed structure of I explained here. So, so you can see when we are clicking on any component of the eye, we can see its detailed information in the left panel. So this is for blind spot, cornea. So we can have the whole view of eye anatomy in 3D view scope. So we can have we can have zoom feature as well. We can zoom it like this. And then we have accelerometer here so that we can get uh, its 3D view. See the object is tilting. We can see the latency here. So we can have its 3D view like this by tilting it. I'll just forward it a little. OK, in this, then we have practice activity as well, which will showcase you a quiz. We have quiz for students, which will, uh, which is all about like the various parts of I, we, we have a question here like select the correct option for the highlighted part in the image. So we're going to, we will going to select any option and then like I have chosen blind spot here. So we got a description here and my score goes with one, goes from zero to one. So we have multiple questions here. Then we, and then in working of I, we have, uh, sorry, then in structure of I, we have uh, practice activity, we are done with it. And then in working of I, we have three modules. First is for image formation, second is for defects of I, and third is practice activity. So here, we can, so we can see the image formation here. All this animation is previously created by 
previous interns, we just imported it in Unity. So. Defects of five we have. Okay, this is the practice activity. Okay, here we have this part, which is adaption of I. So how uh, I adapts with the light intensity. So we have the video which is showing uh, light intensity on I, and then the practice activity for this as well. So this is the video showcasing the effect of light on the size of pupil. So you can see that uh, when light increases, the size of the pupil contracts and when it the light intensity decreases it dilates so this is the practice activity we just go, we just increase the light int intensity using the slide bar and you can see the changes in the pupil it contracts and dilates accordingly so now I'll hand over the, this to Suman. He'll tell you about the challenges we faced. Good morning to all. Now I'm going to explain about the various challenges we faced during the making of app. In many technical problems, we have many technical challenges faced. In that, we, are not, we would like to show a prominent examples of that. One of the example is that installation of open source game engines. There is no proper documentation available for that installation of open, many open source game engines. That is very tough to install and we are stuck with it. No one knows anything how to do installation, no documentation available. Sometimes we thought that coding that game engine is a bit easier than the installation of that open source game engine. That's what the situation we faced. Even though we have faced many coding problems in Unity 3D, we have a forum and we, which is of quick response so that we code it easier and we, our work is simple with Unity. Coming to the next, what we have learnt. We came to know the various open source game engines and pros and cons of that. We learnt Blender. Blender is good enough for making models for our use. But we came to know the main importance of Blender when we are asked to conduct a workshop on that. That is what the biggest learning point what we have had. Where the student, suddenly we are faced with the students, they were supposed to ask the questions and they are checking our knowledge on the Blender. That's what the situation and this is what the biggest learning point what we have had. And learning unity teamwork and team manage, time management this is what we have learned here in summer intern 2014 hand over to arpana hello everyone now i'm going to tell you about the future scope of uh, our project uh, now uh, we can introduce multiple languages multiple indian languages like uh, hindi telugu marathi in our application uh, by replace the text uh, we can use this same approach, uh, uh, same approach of learning with uh, all these user interactivities in uh, various human body parts like uh, for brain, for uh, heart, for lungs, uh, etc. And uh, we can uh, we can also extend the features like uh, uh, we can add uh, gesture recognition, eye tracking, etc. And uh, uh, as we know, uh, Unity, uh, Unity can give output for multiple platforms such as uh, Windows, uh, iOS, uh, Linux uh, or various game engines like uh, Xbox or Oculus, uh, Oculus Rift. Then uh, we can also use this, uh, uh, this app with Oculus Rift also. And Oculus Rift is a, uh, a real-time 3D game engine which, gives the, which allows us to uh, uh, go into the virtual world of uh, game. This is our team. I have one question. How much time did you take to actually develop the application? Apart from the learning. 
So if I if I give you year now, how long will it take? Sir, to actually create the application, it took less time. We could complete it in exactly. two weeks only. Exactly. So that's only. why I'm asking. Yes, two sir. Weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks into how many people? Two weeks and seven people. Two weeks into seven people, so fourteen person week required for any human uh, this thing. Yes, sir. But fourteen blender experts, or unity experts, or both. Both. So most of the time was actually spent in deliberating over a game engine to choose. So we worked on each of the open source game engines to figure out what are the shortcomings in each one of them. So because Unity 3D had the crisp and snappy graphics we needed, we had to converge and stop at that point and begin work and finish it actually. It works on desktop also. We can create it, but uh, currently it's working on Android. But you said that it produces all kinds of outputs. Unity. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can create a desktop application, but this was created customly for Android. The touch, pinch, zoom, and swipe interactivity. No, no. You, you just now said Unity creates all kinds of yes, outputs. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. This can be created for desktop. What is the timeline? Dot exe. Dot dot exe. What about Linux? Doesn't run dot exe. We have these options in build settings of Unity itself. So wherever wherever you hosted this thing, okay, you should host other other all the operating systems because let us see if Unity works, and and make sure that it is hosted wherever for uh, people to see. Okay. So that can be exported, but the interactivities will be different for different platforms. So accordingly, we'll uh, we'll have to change the uh, code interactivities. And then, uh, exam for according to that, we can develop the application. Uh, are, are you are you sure, sir? Because pin pin zoom can't work for desktop applications. That has to be in Android only. For desktop, we'll use keyboard and mouse interactivities. So these all features are present in the Blender game engine itself. So uh, that can be done in lesser time than we took for Android. No, no. Your basic objective is to. Create something for all cross-platform. Yeah. Now you started by saying that Blender game engine, yeah. though great, does not work with Android for some reason. Okay, that's why you chose Unity. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yes, sir. So I can't develop it on two. I need a single, single development but platform. Then, Unity can give you any output. Yeah. Then it, then it has to be only Unity. Yes, sir. Yeah. The mouse and keyboard interface. Yeah, the only thing is you have to add uh, same yeah. listener. You have to add to different kinds of events, and then it should work everywhere. Thank you all for your patience.